here's your host, health and wellness correspondent, Lee Kelso. Hey, good morning. So glad to be back with you again and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you as part of your busy Saturday morning. Doesn't matter whether you're listening on the air, on the podcast, or streaming live, wherever you are in the country, you're going to hear some things today that you're just not going to hear anywhere else. So I'm glad you're here for us. And we're going to start with why you should eat like a caveman. Now, I'm not really talking here about using stone tools and eating with your hands. You know, for, for, for eons, humans were hunter-gatherers, right? We ate what we could find, and often that meant you went extended periods without any food. Well, it turns out that can be a very good thing for you because it gives your body a chance to do some cleaning and cellular repair. Today, we call that intermittent fasting, and there is good evidence it helps with diabetes, high blood pressure, many other conditions, and even even might help you live better longer, extending longevity. So let's learn more about all of this by talking to registered dietitian Diana Lacalzi. She woke up early today, joined us all the way from Boulder, Colorado. Colorado to share what she's learned about intermittent fasting and how it can improve your health. Good morning, Diana. Glad to have you here. Good morning, Lee. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love this topic. Uh, tell me about the benefits of intermittent fasting. Why should we be doing this? Yes, yeah, it is a very interesting topic. And more and more research is coming out that showing its positive impact on human health. So uh, they're the top. The, Benefits range from metabolic benefits all the way to longevity-focused benefits. So just to get into some of those more metabolic benefits, intermittent fasting can improve biomarkers associated with um, longevity and, again, metabolic, metabolic health. So blood glucose, LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, and triglycerides. And the evidence is so strong that um, research shows that intermittent fasting can actually reduce your fasting blood glucose by up to um, 10 to 27 percent. And then LDL and triglycerides can range from anywhere to four, from four to 37 percent improvement. Um, and also can significantly help with weight loss as well. Yeah, so that's a nice benefit, right? Everybody trying to lose a little weight these days. So that's pretty interesting. I understand also it can reduce all the markers for inflammation and uh, do a lot of other good things. So tell me about the aging process. You know, I'm, I'm big into hacks, health hacks, and anti-aging. How does intermittent fasting play into that regime? Yeah, so during fasting, our cells undergo adaptive stress. So this is a type of physiological stress that can actually elicit positive responses in our body. So this stress actually activates different pathways resulting in a range of effects, including increased production of antioxidants, DNA repair, autophagy. So autophagy is the removal of damaged or dead cells, and we can get into that a little more, um, and decreased inflammation, like we said. Um, and there was actually a 2019 study, so a pretty recent study that showed early time-restricted feeding, which is a type of intermittent fasting, can result in higher production of autophagy gene, uh, which again, like I said, it's a process in in which our body removes dead or damaged cells, um, which are often referred to as senescent cells. And it allows our body to make new healthier cells and kind of a form of cellular housekeeping. And Mm -hmm. autophagy plays an essential role in many biological processes and has shown to be protective against age-related illnesses. So this increase in autophagy can actually play a huge role in anti-aging and longevity. So my understanding of this is when you go a long period of time without asking your cells to process energy from the food that you've eaten, um, they kind of flip into a, a, as you said, a housekeeping mode. They kind of clean up after themselves. And I've heard it described as the ash of all of that processing is swept away. And you just mentioned there's something called senescent cells, which I think are really interesting, and we're finding out more about them. Um, they're kind of zombie cells. They they really don't work well anymore, but they don't die. They just kind of sit there and give off sort of a funk, right? I mean, and they affect other cells around, and it can. It's really a fascinating process. Yeah, it really is. Um, cell senescence. Basically, the cells can no longer go through cellular division, and so 
like you said, they just kind of stay around in our body and they cause inflammation. They can affect our um, mitochondria. So this cellular housekeeping, this autophagy allows our body to actually do a little repair and get rid of some of these um, cell cellular senescent cells, these senescent cells. So, you know, we keep hearing that you should eat several meals a day, not just one meal, but I think that now is not the right advice. Are we learning that all of that is no longer the game? Yeah, so there's some really interesting research coming out and um, intermittent fasting focuses more on when you should eat and less on what to eat. And um, people who, who are practicing the cycle between fasting and um, and then eating, it can have these tremendous results. So, you know, if you are someone who is interested in longevity, I think most people are, or if you are interested in reducing some of these biomarkers that I had mentioned, intermittent fasting may be the way to go for you. Yeah. And if you have any questions about uh, intermittent fasting and changing the time that you eat, uh, Diana is available and you can, we can take your call at 800-333-1190 or 447-1190. We'd love to answer your questions about intermittent fasting. Okay. So I'm onto this. I've been doing uh, an intermittent fast for, gosh, I'm going to guess about a year now. And, um, I don't really, I, I don't ever really feel like I'm depriving myself of anything. Do you, what are you hearing from people? Do they feel hungry and are they starving and, and you know, get the, the blood glucose crash and the headaches or the dizziness? Tell me how your body adapts to going without food for a period of time. Yeah, so from I've worked with some people who um, have started to incorporate intermittent fasting into their, their routine. And you know, at first, it may be a little challenging if you're used to eating every, you know, every so often, uh, if you're not used to going through long periods of time of fasting. So my advice is to, to start slow. Um, you know, if you don't rush into it, don't do a huge fast right away. Uh, your body needs to adjust. Um, so there are different time restrictions that you can give your body. And one of the common ones is an eight-hour feeding window. So that means basically, so that's um, a time restricted feeding. So eating is limited to a very specific time window. And again, like that, the common one is eight hours. So if you're eating at 10 a.m., you have your first meal at 10 a.m. and then your last meal would be at 6 p.m. And then it's followed mm -hmm. by an overnight set fast. So if you wanted to start there, I, I would encourage that. And if that's even too hard for you, you could even um, increase your feeding window to a little bit more. But the idea is to start creating a hard start and a hard stop to your your overall diet feeding window. So, so Diana, uh, let's talk about how we get started in the various methods here. We talked about something called time-restricted eating. So that's the 16-8 fast. Well, let's walk through that and why you recommend that as a starting point for people. Yeah, so the time restricted feeding is when feeding is limited to limited to a specific time window. So it's most commonly an eight hour feeding window. So that would be a 10, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. as an example, and it's followed by an overnight extended fast. I find that this type of intermittent fasting tends to be easiest for people to start mm -hmm. because you are still allowing yourself to eat every day. Whereas the other two methods of intermittent fasting, um, they they place some restriction on whole day fasts. So, so we can get so into those I'm other... Points. Yeah, we will. I'm I'm doing a 16-8, and I've always wondered, am I, am I breaking the fast by having coffee first thing in the morning and then waiting until I'm usually about 10.30 before I have any breakfast? Not really. So research shows that coffee is not really going to break your fast. It's really important that it's really important to look at what you're adding into your coffee. So if you are adding a bunch of cream and sugar, then yes, that's when you could break your fast. But if you're having just black coffee or just tea on its own, then there's, there's a good chance that you're not breaking your fast. Okay. So 16, eight, that makes a lot of sense. It's worked very well for me. Uh, and the next step up from that, if you want to get a little more serious about it, what, what should I think about next? 
So the next one is called alternate day fasting. So fasting or restricted calorie intake occurs every other day. So every other day you either fast or you restrict your calories to less than 20% of what you usually would eat. So it is a little bit more challenging for people to do this one compared to time restricted feeding. So 20%, I have no idea how much my daily calories are. So what, do you have any idea of what, what does that amount to that 20% figure? So this definitely, uh, it depends on a few things. It would depend on your height, weight, your current goals. Um, so I can't give you a, a number, but um, there are some great calculators online that you can input this data and it'll give you an overall suggested calorie intake. So then you would just take 20% of that number. Okay, got okay. it. And if I want to go hardcore on this, uh, isn't there like a two-day version? Yes. So it's called 5-2 intermittent fasting and fasting takes place two days of the week while regular food intake happens on the other five. So two full days of fasting each week, which can, be, again, can be very challenging for people. Yeah, I would think so, too. And that's that's total fast, no calories, no nothing for those two days? Or is that, again, that 20% reduction thing? So it, it, it depends. You know, you could do lower reduction, uh, lower calorie reduction, but for the most part, it's two days of full fasts. Wow. So just water. Wow. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I could wow. handle two days of no food at all. Uh, it's hard. I've done one days of no food, 24 hour fast before. And, you know, it, it is challenging at first. Your body does adapt. So the more you do it, the easier it does get. So how does this help me with, so I'm just eating less, right, in those types of fasts. But in the 16-8 thing, um, how does that help me lose weight? So there's actually a few different explanations for this. Um, a lot of studies show that uh there's weight loss is associated with this intermittent fasting, specifically the time restricted one. And a few reasons account for this. So first, many Americans actually tend to eat more calories towards the end of the day. So restricting your food intake at night helps to reduce your overall calorie intake. And then second, because of our circadian rhythm and our metabolic slowing, um, calories consumed at night may have more of a negative impact on your weight compared to calories consumed in the morning. So based off of this, I actually, I recommend time-restricted feeding that window, the feeding window to happen earlier on in the day. You'll see actually much more um, weight loss, you know, if that is your goal, and you'll see more improvements in those metabolic biomarkers that I mentioned before. So eat earlier, but stop eating earlier. So don't eat anything after like three o'clock in the morning, in the afternoon. Is that kind of what you're suggesting here? Uh, you could extend that a little bit, you know, at, even 5 or 6 p.m., you can still reap some of those benefits that I talked about. It's okay. There okay. have been some studies where intermittent fasting takes place in the later end of the day, so 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., and um, the researchers found that the subjects didn't quite lose much weight. So if you are going to practice intermittent fasting, I do recommend shifting that so that it's earlier in the day. Okay. okay. We're, uh, we have just a few minutes left or a couple more things I want to cover with you, but let me let folks know that there is a link up right now on the Health Call Facebook page to an article that Diana wrote that tells you all of this, and there's charts and graphs, explains the 5-2 and 16-8 and all that stuff. So you can bounce out to the uh, Health Call Facebook page, and you'll find that information there. And I'm also then going to post soon uh, a link to uh, Diana's program for people who are trying to get type to diabetes under control. So tell me more about that. How do I find this information and what does it include? Yeah, so I a lot of the work I do focuses on helping people reverse pre and type 2 diabetes. You can check out my Instagram or our website, reversingt2d.com. Instagram is reversingt2d. Um, we run an online program so you can um, learn about nutrition. You can learn about diabetes from the comfort of your own home. It's a 10 week program and by the end of the 10 weeks, um, you can hopefully have lost significant weight and see re significant reductions in your glucose and your A1C by following our program. So what is the, what's entailed in the program? Is it a diet plan and exercise? Give me an idea of what it includes. 
Yeah. So each week you watch pre-recorded lectures. The lectures cover a range of topics, including nutrition, diabetes, exercise, stress relief and mentality. Um, and then you're also, you also receive weekly meal plans that I actually created. So if you're stumped on what to eat to help you reverse diabetes, um, you'll get these weekly meal plans delivered to your email inbox each week with delicious recipes um, and grocery shopping lists. And then you also have access to a community forum where you have access to myself and an exercise physiologist to ask us any questions and also to find support in other people going through the program and going through a similar journey as you. Is there a cost associated with this program? There is a cost for the 10 weeks. It's $197. Okay. So 19 bucks a week. Well, that doesn't sound crazy. No, not at all. You know, we do understand that diabetes does um, disproportionately affect uh, a lower income population. Most of the time I am, uh, I'm Hispanic myself. And so I've seen it um, affect a lot of my family members and a lot of my community. And so it was really important to me to number one, focus my work in diabetes and also offer uh, an approach to reverse diabetes that was also affordable for people. Man, there's just all the reason in the world to get your type 2 diabetes under control. That disease is so deadly. It, Gosh, it creeps up on you and affects so many areas of your life. Uh, anything that you can do to get T2D under control, and you can find out more about that by going to reversingt2d.com, and that's where you'll find Diana's information about type 2 diabetes and insulin control. Bouncing back to intermittent fasting, Diana, is there anybody who shouldn't be doing this? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you asked me that. So it's definitely not for everyone. So individuals who are underweight or who have a history or are currently struggling with eating disorders should definitely refrain from participating in intermittent fasting. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, I don't, I do not recommend it. And if you do have diabetes, I know we, we just talked about this or, you know, or if you're on glucose lowering medications, um, you may want to consult your doctor or a dietitian before beginning intermittent fasting because it can have such a significant impact on your glucose levels. It can reduce your glucose. So if you're already taking diabetes medications to lower your glucose, you may risk having very low, low glucose levels, which can cause hypoglycemia, which is something that is very dangerous. You mm -hmm. always want to avoid that. But that's not to say you can't give it a try. I just would recommend consulting with a doctor or dietitian before. Wow. I am. It, it is that powerful. That's that's great to hear. You know, the American College of Cardiologists has uh, come forward and said intermittent fasting combined with a Mediterranean diet is the single most healthy lifestyle you can have for your cardiovascular system. I think that's a pretty strong endorsement. And that's where we're going to leave it today. Diana Lacalzi, thank Thank you very much for joining us. Sure, appreciate it. You can find more about her program to help you get your type 2 diabetes under control by going to reversingt2d.com. And again, links to her article with all the information about intermittent fasting research is online now on the Facebook page for Health Call. Just look for Health Call on Facebook and you'll find the link there. Diana, thanks again so much. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. You bet.